Hey guys, welcome to EP series video number seven. So if you haven't seen numbers one to six, then I would advise you go back, but this is a, a series of videos dedicated to you guys making EPs and what you are gonna do with them and how to get the most traction for them. They're all on my YouTube channel if you are looking. Today's video is about building an EP library. So in one of the videos that, that I did, uh, a couple of weeks back, it was about purpose. What is the purpose? In fact, I think it was number one. It was the most important start to the video. Sarah's nodding her head like this. Yes, it was. Um, the first video, what is the purpose of making this EP? We're not just gonna make it because we feel like it. Are we trying to sell it? Are we trying to build an audience? Are we trying to, to look after our audience and say thank you? Any of those things are fine, but having an actual purpose of what you wanna do is, is kind of, for me, is a key area when you're gonna put this EP together. The issue then is actually doing the thing doing the purpose that you've, in, you've you've created this for. So what I see quite a lot of times is people going, yeah, no, no, I want to sell it. So I say, okay, well, sell it. And people say, no, no, I don't really mind the money. I just want to build the audience. So I think, okay, we'll do that. Now, when you say we want to do one of these things, if you just put it on Facebook and you say, there it is, that isn't selling it. That isn't saying thank you, really. And that isn't building anything all you're doing there is you're, you're just using using words you're saying yeah i want to i want to sell it that's what i want to do i really want to sell it but you're not selling it so then we talked about targets but what i want to talk about today is doing something with that purpose so i want to talk about building an ep library because the question that crops up for me is when should you sort of leave the EP alone, the first EP that you've made, and make a start on number two? So more importantly, when should you stop promoting and stop sort of selling the first one and focus more on the second one? Now, the reason why I ask this question is because this is the way that I see most bands sort of producing and putting out and selling their EPs. This is what I see, okay? I see this is number one EP. I'm even gonna name, I'm gonna label it EP number one. Then we go, right, that's done. We did a good job there. We, we did all the pre-production. We wrote the songs, did the pre-production. We got in the studio, we, we recorded it, fantastic. We've put it out, we've done our bit, we've promoted it, however you wanna do it. Second thing is, right, next one. So then we work on number two. EP number two. EP, hopefully I'm not going off. The edge of the screen, EP number three. This is what I see regularly. We're on EP number one. When we hit the end of EP number two, or number one, we close it off and we start thinking about EP number two. And then EP number one gets just, it just gets thrown into the annals of history. It's just in the vault. That was something that was done, but now we're on something new and exciting. And it's EP number two. EP number one, yeah, great, but this is EP number two. This is what we're promoting. And then that comes to the end, and then it's EP number three. So I want, I want to propose a different way of looking at this because the question is, when should you stop promoting and selling your EP? Well, the answer to that is, why in God's name would you stop promoting and selling your EP? You've made something that you're trying to sell. Why would you stop it? You carry on going. So here is the way I want you to think about the next three, four, five EPs. What I want, how far are I? Can I go, to, can I go down here? Yes, I can. Okay, this is your first EP, okay? Now, when it comes to your second EP, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our second EP, which means this one carries on going and it does this. We're having a bit more of a pyramid and then the third one carries on like this. And again, this one keeps going. The sale of this, the promotion of this keeps going. The third one, fourth one, etc., etc. Can you see, there's no stop. We're not stopping our EP and then moving on to our second one and then stopping it and, and going on to the third one. We're constantly banging on about the first one. So what happens when the third one comes out? We still bang on about the first one. Why can't you? This, this EP is not irrelevant. When did this one become irrelevant? When did it become old news and this one became new news? The only, the only time that happens is, as musicians, we make that happen. What we do is we say, this one's old, and nobody likes old, and this one's new, so therefore it's exciting. And then after a while, this one's now old. This one's very, very old. This one is now new, so this one becomes more exciting. So you're the ones who are triggering making this old news, making this irrelevant, and making this relevant. 
it's all relevant because this is the history of your band. This is your first EP. This is something you are proud of. So when it comes to your second one, this doesn't stop, it doesn't go away. We don't start again, which is what bands tend to do again and again. We carry on going. Now, there is this, what, what I would call the sweet spot, which is when you start getting to this point here, all of a sudden, you have a library. So whilst you're still selling stuff, it means people who find you right at this point here, they find you for EP number three, or, you know, I'm using EP, but it can be, you know, it can be an album, you know, but EP number three, they need to be finding out about you and going and listening and going and buying EP two or EP number one. It can carry on going. And it's the same thing with any sales product that you make. Just because you make a new product, the old one, unless, unless the old one is out of date, but the old, this, the first product that you made is still around. So I want people to stop thinking like this model and start thinking like this model. Because if you do, then you can start marketing very, very cleverly to be able to sell this one here. Whereas if you look at this in our model, we've stopped, we've cut it off, and now we're working on this and everything goes. But in this model, we can carry on selling this one. So when we're promoting this one, we can have deals. We can say, buy this one, we'll give you this one for free. We can be using this as a sales and marketing tool as it carries on going. And therefore, we are building more of a kind of pyramid scheme and your music isn't becoming less relevant. In fact, this one almost becomes more relevant because this is the start. This is where it all started and this should be promoted. So the question is, when should you stop promoting and selling your EP? You shouldn't. And so this is what I think. As soon as this EP is gonna have the release date, which is what people tend to have, a release date and then they wanna have a release party and then they wanna make a video and then they wanna try and get on radio and they'll do that for a week and then they'll deflate and then that'll be the end of that. And then they'll wait for three months and then they'll make a start on this one. However, if you put your EP out and it comes out on March the 1st, why can't you be doing three months or six months or 12 months of carrying on promoting? Why does it need to be that week? Like most of you watching aren't gonna sell enough to get in the chart. So this idea of everything needs to happen in the first week is irrelevant for most of you. What is relevant is that you hit targets that you put into play. So if you're gonna do that, then you can still be hitting targets for the first one when EP4 comes out. There's no reason why you can't do that. So what would you do? Well, what I would do is I would have some kind of calendar after the release date and I'd be looking at ways that I could sell it. How do you sell something? Well, firstly, if, it was, if I was selling an EP or selling an album, I'd go and do gigs and I'd go and find new audiences and whilst I was doing the gigs, I'd be promoting it at gigs. I'd be doing... I'd be doing collabs, I'd be doing anything I can to get in front of people and I'd constantly be saying, don't forget all our EPs, not our EP, our new EP, but all our EPs are available. If you've got number three, why haven't you got number one? You know, there is an opportunity for you to get people in here at this point where people just hear about your new EP, there's a good chance that if you are selling this, there's a good chance that people can buy all four. So if this is going for a fiver, that's going for a fiver, that's going for a fiver, and that's going for a fiver, it's 20 quid. Whereas what I'm actually seeing is people joining here in the old system and paying Fiverr, and then this is all gone. This is like, this is all past. It's just like Facebook where you only scroll up to a certain amount and then after that it's just gone, banished into history. So this is the way I would suggest where you are looking at a library of EPs. And, and therefore, if you've got a library, it means you have to promote it as a library. You are promoting yourself with the body of work. So therefore, if you're at this point, there's no reason why you can't take a trip down memory lane and do a live performance of, of a track off the first EP. You can still be selling it, you can still be promoting it, you can still be pushing it. You've just got more material, which means you've got more content to be able to make. So this part here is, is direct sales is what we're talking now. You guys are telling me you want to make an EP. I'm telling you fine, in which case think about what you're going to do. Now, if you don't want to sell it and you want to, you want to build an audience with it or you want to say thank you, then do that. If you want to build an audience, then the whole point is to use it to build an audience. Just putting it on your Facebook isn't building an audience. That's just plonking it on your Facebook. In order to build an audience, you do the same thing. You get out there with it and you start using it to do a blog or to, to feature on someone else's blog or feature on someone else's vlog. If you are not doing that every day for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, if not months, then you're doing it wrong because should you stop this process of selling the first one after three months? No, six months, no, 12 months, no. Why not keep going? 
So just because it's music that people have heard, there's seven and a half billion people in the world. You can carry on going. It doesn't just have to be the first 200 people who buy it. You can keep going. So this is a direct sales thing. I want you to stop thinking about this approach of signing yourself and then making EPs, getting bored and fed up and then starting the next one and that one's over and the new one begins. And I want you to think about how you're gonna build up because the sweet spot is probably somewhere around this area. And by sweet spot, what I mean is by this point, people are gonna be excited and aware that you are gonna be bringing out EPs on a three month or six month basis. So in which case, you've got a bit more excitement. This one is where you launch it and people go, oh, okay, that's quite cool, that's quite exciting. EP2, people go, oh yeah, okay, cool. So this is gonna be a regular thing, that's fantastic. I can see how it's gonna work now. By EP number three, people are starting to expecting it and they're like, oh yeah, cool, okay, I, I, I was wondering when the next one will come out. Next one, number four, this bit here is when people are gonna be saying, when is the next one? Not this one where people say, that's really exciting. They're like, when's the next stuff? When's the next stuff? I wanna hear the next stuff. They're into the rhythm, they're into the routine. But just because you get here, it doesn't mean that this isn't important. So this is the way I want you to think. Stop thinking like this. Start thinking about building a body of work. Because when you get 10 EPs, imagine if people are still buying EP or album, whatever you call it, if they're buying albums when you're on number 10 and people are still buying the first one. They will if you play it right and if you promote it right and if you sell it right. But if you don't, then it will just become irrelevant and you don't want that. So that's it. So I think we're almost done with the old EP series. I'll have a think about a few, few ideas of what I want to do next, but I've got a few other series ideas that I want to do. But if you've got an idea for a series, rather than just do one video, but an actual series, then I think you should comment below and tell me what you'd like me to do a series on where I can do up to, up to 10 videos in a bit more detail. How I think about it, if you can do me a favor, if you can comment on this, if you can like it, if you can share it, anything you, anything you can do to get the word out there, that would massively help me. If you can subscribe to the YouTube, and if you wanna ask me a question directly, come and see me on Instagram, hit me up with the old DMs, and I will get right back to you. Otherwise, have a good one. I'll see you guys tomorrow.